Hey, yo, what's going on? I'm Josh Martinez from the Superstar Crossover on iHeartRadio and New York's number one hit music station, Z100, with my guest, Xavier Woods. What's going on, bro? I'm good, man. How you doing? Chilling. Uh, August 5th, SummerSlam up in Detroit. Big show. Uh, how different are the stadium shows compared to the basic arena shows? Uh, they're different because there's so many more people there, obviously. Uh, and the energy is just wild. When you pack that amount of people into one building and they're all focused on the same thing, um, it's, it's almost like an out-of-body experience, you know? Because everybody is so focused and just yelling and screaming and there's little kids, there's old people and it's it's people from all walks of life, you know, and um, honestly, when you're standing in the ring and you're looking at this sea of people, it's it's kind of breathtaking. It's amazing that this thing that we happen to love so much to the point that we want to do it as many days a week as we can for our jobs, that this many and this amount of people, this, these different kinds of people love it to the point that they will come and sit down next to each other and put all their differences aside, all the things that they might not have in common don't matter because right now they're watching wrestling, you know? It's awesome. And September 2nd, it's a special date. It's my birthday. Hey, Easy happy birthday. I'm on the 4th. Really? So you and Beyonce? There we go, yeah. Yep. I want to say I have Salma Hayek um, and Bam Bam Bigelow. Oh. I believe it's September 3rd. Oh, okay. I correctly. It's a good month, man. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to our dads who are probably sitting there on Christmas like, I ain't got nothing, but you don't get this. <laughs> yeah, Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're a G4 host nowadays? Yeah, so G4, actually, I found out on Twitter. I was on an airplane, and I uh, realized I could get on Twitter on the internet in the air, and... Uh, G4 was was just randomly terminated. I got no email, got no call that all of our jobs were gone. It was it was a crazy day. How so literally when when we found out about Twitter, you found out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So I never I never got a call, an email, and then I just hit up all the when I landed, I hit up all the other hosts and they already had like a group chat going. The group chat was blown up. We're like, "What happened?" They're like, "Yeah, just it kind of imploded and <laughs> but we had fun while it lasted, you know?" There you go. But the good thing is that you have that under your belt. You have that on your resume, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you're not going to be wrestling forever, mm -hmm. nor should you be really, right? Yeah, what is the next sure. phase of your career? Next phase of my career. So one thing that I've always been pretty focused on is is what the next chapter looks like. Just because I think mm. that's it's something that, and not to get, stop me if I'm getting too deep. Uh, one thing that I don't think a lot of us talk about as as adults is that there are chapters to this. You are not going to stay in the same profession your entire life, most likely, you know? Um, so me, for, for, for me as a professional wrestler, eventually that chapter ends and being able to talk to so many of the veterans and seeing what that was like for them, transitioning to not traveling anymore, into owning a business, into building a podcast, whatever it is, that takes time. And it's scary because this is what I've known for almost 20 years. This is life, you know? I've been, I've been a wrestler longer than half my life. That's how I've identified myself. And so I've been doing a lot of work in the video game space because I wanted to do two things when I was a kid is be a pro wrestler with WWE, WWE superstar and work in video games. And so made this YouTube channel eight years ago, up, up, down, down, where we play a lot of games, we're doing all this stuff. And so I've been able to start writing a couple pages of my next chapter before this one ends, uh, because I wanted to make sure that I'm, that, I, that I'm set up, that I can still have fun. My dad said, if you have a hobby that you love and you can turn it into a job, that, that's how you live, you know? Um, and so that's all my focus has been. So you're going to see me hosting more video game stuff, bouncing around, uh, doing tournaments here and there. And also I'm trying to host a game show. I know they just booked Ryan Seacrest to be the new host of Wheel of Fortune after Sage Jack yep. leaves, but he can keep the seat warm for me. And then when I'm ready and I, I've, I've got my chops in the, in the field, I'm going to be on there. <laughs> what would be your dream uh, game show to host? Honestly, probably Wheel of Fortune. Really? Yeah. For ones that are already established. If I had my, my, of course. my magic wand, I can bring one back. I don't know if you remember this. There was a show on Nickelodeon called Nick Arcade. Yeah. That... I want to host the new Nick Arcade on Nickelodeon. That's that's the big goal. Well, I mean, listen, you do a lot of stuff within New York City. That's where I'm based out yep. of, right? I, I know you run around the city often. Why not set up a meeting with Viacom and Nickelodeon and all the people there and present it to them? So, so without saying too much, I mean, we may have been talking. 
Okay. We may have been talking, you know, (laughs) but it's always good to put the goals out there. Keep yourself accountable. I'm a firm believer that your thoughts become things, right? So manifestation is real. I mean, Mm -hmm. I've done radio in Iowa and Ohio, and then finally got my dream job as an adult, you know, at the biggest radio station on the planet. And that's because I had an alarm clock every day that would go off that would say, I will be at Z100. And that's been on my alarm since like fucking 2009. There we go. You know what I'm saying? Um, by the way, just as a as a side note, I was talking to someone about you the other day, and I said oh. that you have one of the most underrated physiques in wrestling today. <laughs> the, I don't I think that when we talk about bodies, right, <laughs> we talk about someone's transformation or someone, how bigger they, but much bigger they got. You've just been kind of solid since, you know, uh, the TNA days. Mm-hmm. What is your number one rule when it comes to consistency in remaining in shape so i'm i take this stuff i'm on this stuff that my my parents gave me it's called genetics it's amazing i highly recommend it to anybody out there uh, <laughs> no um i've always been very focused on um on just trying to necessarily not necessarily just maintain all the time every once in a while mm. like i'm trying to grow right now i'm trying to put some put some meat on the shoulders but um i don't i don't count macros or any of like this i don't know any of the science but I'm I'm always kind of been the person who just goes off what my body tells me. I know that if I eat a full pizza, that's not good for me. So I don't need to count that or write that down. Allegedly. You know, <laughs> yes, yes, agreed. Allegedly. Sorry. It's 2023. They could have something better in it now. Um, but like if I if I wanna, you know, lean out some, I'm gonna eat a bunch of rotisserie chicken. I'm gonna eat some broccoli, I'm gonna eat some apples, some oranges, uh, uh, increase the fruit, increase the water. Uh and then if you can, you can literally feel yourself growing in a bad way or a good way, you know, and it's having honest conversations with yourself about how you feel, not necessarily how you look, it's how you feel, because when you feel good, you're going to look good. And that's really what my, I guess my mantra has been this whole time. Uh, we're going to kind of bounce all over the place. Um, yep. Would you consider Pokemon to be an anime? Yes. Okay. Of course. So our previous guest, uh, so this is, by the way, it's a superstar crossover. So our previous guest has a question for you, and okay. then you're going to have a question for our next guest. Can I ask our who next guest, guest was? Um, Adam Cole. Don't know if you heard oh, of him. One of those guys. Yeah. Yeah. Bam, bam. Dude. <laughs> My boy. So he said that his favorite anime was Pokemon. But okay. then he kind of stopped and didn't know if the Twitter trolls would come after him. So we just wanted to get confirmation from someone of your status. Oh, 100% anime. The only the thing that I think people would say it's not anime, like, oh, it's too popular. Well, I think, relax, relax. It's like one of the biggest money-making franchises of all time. We should just be happy that an anime is on that pedestal, you know? They held so, us back in Dragon Ball Z, but now we got them with Pokemon. <laughs> Adam Cole's question for you was, who is your favorite member of Departy and why is it Chugs? Oh, man. Man, I guess I will say Chugs. I guess I will say Chugs because he is the kindest of the bunch. He's the nicest of the three of us. Um, and he just he just takes a beating from Breeze constantly, verbally. The verbal abuse that Breeze puts on him is, I don't know how he deals with it. And uh, so he's, he's my favorite because of his patience. <laughs> there we Fair. go. That's so cute. <laughs> uh, our next guest, it will be an AEW wrestler. Ooh. Don't know who yet. So what question would you have for them? Ooh. Um. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think of a real question because I have a bunch of garbage questions in my head. <laughs> I've gotten questions from your favorite match. What got you into wrestling to... Uh, how much do you miss me from Soraya, for example? Okay. Okay. Um, what's your favorite part in the movie White Chicks? If the answer isn't Terry Crews with the whistles, then what, what's the only <laughs> other option? He's in the club with the dog. <laughs> That's the only option, no? He's so sick. It is. So, okay. I don't know. I love the whole movie. I love the whole movie. That, man, man, that's a good movie. 
<laughs> and it's 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 just like stayed the test of time, stood the test of time. Whatever. I'm not an English major. Yeah. <laughs> you can put it on right now, and it's still dope. You know what? After as soon as we get down, I'm throwing it on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> so, I like to do a quick game of this or that. Okay. All right, this is going to be kind of uh, New York City slash childhood edition. Mm-hmm. All right, here we go. Brooklyn or Manhattan? Brooklyn. Pizza or Chinese food? Uh, pizza. Tattoos or piercings? <sighs> Tattoos. Midtown or downtown? Midtown. Yellow cab or Ubers? Yellow cab. Jimmy or Jay Uso? Jay. <laughs> Sega or Nintendo? Sega. Donkey Kong or Street Fighter? Street Fighter. PlayStation or N64? Which PlayStation? Original PlayStation. N64. PlayStation or Xbox? Originals. <sighs> PlayStation. What is your favorite video uh, video game of all time? Tekken 7. 7? Yeah. Why specifically 7? Because so this it's the latest one. 8 is about to come out fairly soon, uh, hopefully. But uh, it, my favorite game was Mario Kart Double Dash on the GameCube. Mm. Yeah, Mario Kart's unreal. But I've been playing... Tekken 7 is probably the game in the past like two or three years that I put the most time into because we played so much in the locker mm. room. It got to the point where we were mashing buttons. And then it got to the point where we're kind of learning combos. They didn't get to the point where we're sidestepping and counter comboing and doing all this stuff. So we're like legitimately growing as a teching community in the locker room. And I just, I spend so much of my time just dumped into it. So that's my game right now. So locker room wise, uh, where you been dog? So Kofi had ankle surgery, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, during that draft came over to Raw and had some matches with, uh, with Dom. And then I've been just getting big at home, dude. I've been getting huge. I've been doing Dungeon and Dragons appearances. We're doing uh, USFL appearances. Um, mm-hmm. And that's the interesting thing. So we haven't been on TV in a minute. What, like a month, two months? About two months, maybe. yeah. Um, but the thing that people don't see is all the stuff that we do outside of the ring. And we have been working relentlessly on so many other things. And so we'll be back in due time. We'll be back in due time. There's, if you look at wrestling, the, the landscape has has changed. And it, I love when it changes because it's always coming at, it comes at like a slow pace. And then all of a sudden you see all these faces, our faces that have only been there for like six months or a year or a year and a half. And that's what's kind of happening right now. So many people are filtering in. And so as people filter in and they get established and the crowd gets to know who they are, then all of a sudden New Day, we're back on the attack. We gotta make how space ex- for the new How excited are you? for specifically Jay Uso, but the Usos as a whole to get to the level that they're at now. So excited. It's been awesome seeing their growth throughout the company. So when they first came in and then move into face paint and then uh, turning heel and then like really finding their legs and growing into what they are now. And uh, some of the best performers that we have on the roster, and they have been for a very long time, but the fact that they get Mm -hmm. to show it now and kind of live in it, I think that only makes you better, obviously. And it's been great seeing this um, uh, this comeuppance that we've been seeing from Jay, especially because when people are coming into the bloodline, he's got to sit there and think, oh, I got my ass beat to get into this. Everybody's just getting let in. Like, what is this? So to see him finally pop off has been really awesome to see because it's it's been a long time for him. It's been a long time for both of them. Um, so, so it's right now is a really good time for them. So two final questions. Number one. Who is the most underrated performer in the game today? Chad Gable. Mm. You're the yeah. second person in the last month to say him. Because it's very true. There are, there are a lot of very underrated people. And and not to get on, on a weird high horse, I, I don't believe that wrestling like owes you anything. You know, like wrestling is its entity in itself. And we're all trying to be the absolute best that we can be. And we all want a shot. We all want to be on camera. We all want to have these long grueling matches to show everybody how hard we've worked and what we've been able to do and i think that they're right now especially right now not just in wwe but in all of wrestling i don't think that there's been a time where there have been more talented people across the board in this industry ever and mm-hmm. that's not a slight on the previous generation but i do believe that the generation that comes before you it's their job to help you become the best generation of all time 
So it's our job to make the next generation the best generation of all time so that things get better for the boys, for the girls, and for the fans as well. So, so right now, um, seeing as many people that are as talented as they are in this industry, it it makes me so happy for the future of what we have as pro wrestlers to see people grow. But I, for me, myself personally, I want to see Chad Gable get a spotlight because he he deserves one. He's a guy who came in um, Olympic level wrestler and fell into this and, and learned it quick and is athletic, agile, smart, creative, all of these things. And so my vote is for Gable. And that's a very long winded way to say that. <laughs> uh, my final question uh, what is there left in your wrestling career to achieve and why does it have to do with this thing? Oh, other side. Over here. <laughs> Both of them. Both of them. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, specifically, I want the white leather Intercontinental Championship. Mm. I, I like a story. You know, uh, obviously, me and Seth Rollins are the only ones to beat Roman, you know, up until Jay has pinned him. Uh, right. We don't talk about mine, but that's fine. Um, but in my head, I feel like in order to climb that mountain and become world champion one day, I need a U.S. championship run. I need an intercontinental mm. championship run. I need to not only prove to everybody, but but more importantly, prove to myself that I can I can stand on my own as I can do this like as, as a solo guy. Um, and that doesn't mean that I need to break away from Kofi or E at all, because what we do is we tell stories as a family. I think a lot mm -hmm. of wrestling has stories of jealousy and backstabbery and oh, I want this leather and this metal. So I'm not friends with you anymore, bro. Friendship is the most important thing on this planet to me. That's the only way that we survive. That's how we have societies and communities and we grow as a human race, you know? So that's our focus is telling those stories in wrestling. And so uh, hopefully at some point we have the chance to tell that story through, uh, through your boy. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, uh, shout out to you guys. Eight years, y'all still together. No dissension amongst the ranks, storylines, or anything like that. So kudos to y'all for making it real. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. It's it's something that's important. We just don't we don't mm -hmm. want to tell the same stories as everybody else. And we probably have have uh, you know missed out on a few things because we've wanted to stick together. But those things that we've missed out on would are would are nowhere near as important as what we have as a trio. You know. I think all three of y'all are doing well. So you I good. think so too. <laughs> One more time, Xavier Woods. Appreciate you, bro. Thanks, man.